this video, we'll be discussing about the Buddhist art. And to start with, let us take a look with these questions that we might answer after the discussion. This is John Laverne Marie, and just going to discuss what is Buddhist art all about. Buddhist art refers to the rich and diverse representations of religious images, sculpture, dance, visual mythology, and symbols thriving from the various Buddhist communities found around the world. Buddhist art exhibits distinctive forms and characteristics, reflecting the diverse cultures and countries in which it has spread. Early Buddhist art emerged in India and Sri Lanka. Following the death of Gautama Buddha in 563 BCE to 483 BCE, Buddhist art was transported to other parts of Asia and the world, adapting to local styles and norms in each new host country. Today, Buddhist art constitutes an important part of overall Buddhist cultural legacy. This is Reina Liza, and she is going to discuss about the major influences of Buddhist art. There are major influences of Buddhist art. The art of Ganhara benefit from centuries of interaction with Greek sculpture, uh, culture with the conquest of Alexander the Great in 332 BCE and the subsequent establishment of the Greek Bactrian and Indo-Greek kingdoms, leading to the development of the Greek Buddhist art. Gangharan Buddhist sculpture displays Greek artistic influence and it has been suggested that the concept of the man guide was essentially inspired by Greek mythological culture. The art of Mathura tends to be based on a strong Indian tradition exemplified by the anthropomorphic representations of divinities such as the Yaksas, although in a style rather archaea compared to the later representations of the Buddha. The Mathuran skull contributed clothes covering the left shoulder of thin muslin, the wheel on the palm, and the lotus seat, and etc. Yeah. The pink sandstone sculpture of Mathura evolved during the Gupta period, 4th to 6th century, to reach a very high fineness of execution and delicacy in their modeling. The art of the Gupta school was extremely influential almost everywhere in the west of Asia. Buddhist pre-iconic art originated in India in the 6th century BCE and avoided anthropomorphic representations of the Buddha. And we will now proceed to the next discussion, which is the distinctive features of Buddhist art. This iconic art was characterized from the start by a realistic idealism, combining realistic human features, proportions, attitudes, and attributes together with a sense of perfection and serenity reaching to the divine. This expression of the Buddha became the iconographic canon for subsequent Buddhist art. Hi, I'm Franklin, and I am wondering, how are the famous artists of the time or place? Hmm. To answer that question, let's now proceed to the discussion. First is we have Guan Yin. Guan Yin is known for her unbound wisdom, compassion, and mercy, and depicted in several different forms, personifying kindness. She is often displayed in a flowing white robe where white symbolizes purity and is adorned with necklaces. Her lotus seat signifies peace and harmony. In other representation, the deity has several arms and eyes, referred to as the Thousand Arms, Thousand Eyes Bodhisattva, where she can see the hardships inflicted upon humanity and extends her arms to relieve people from it. Next is we have Padmasambhava. Padmasambhava is heralded as the second Buddha, also known as the Guru in Pochi, is considered responsible for introducing Buddhism to Tibet. Padmasambhava is believed to have eight different manifestations and hence illustrated in different ways. The third one is Tara. Tara is considered the consort of Avalokiteshvara, the male version of Guan Yin. Tara is a venerated Buddhist deity known as the female manifestation of active compassion. Three of her most popular avatars are in green, 
white and red standing for enlightened activity, longevity and compassion and attracting all the good things respectively. And the fourth one is the Manjushri. Manjushri is believed to be the among the oldest and most important bodhisattvas in Mahayana literature. Manjushri exemplifies wisdom. He is often portrayed with ornaments and flaming sword in his right hand, representing the weapon of wisdom that cuts through ignorance. The next one is Kuber or Vaishravana. The revered Lord Kuber is known as Vaishravana in Buddhism, referred to as the king of the north and the lord of Yakshas. The divinity frequently exhibits a yellow face, carrying an umbrella that signifies his power. He is also sometimes seen accompanied by a mongoose that spits out jewels, which is a symbol of generosity. The sixth one is Vajrapani. Vajrapani is considered to be among the earliest appearing bodhisattvas in Mahayana Buddhism. Vajrapani is celebrated as the protector of the Lord Buddha and the one who manifests his power. He often bears a wrathful countenance. His right hand holds a thunderbolt that slices through the darkness of delusion. Well, Buddhism and its various characters have been depicted beautifully in art for thousands of years and make for beautiful decor accents in the home. Intricately carved sculptures and detailed Buddhist paintings don't just look exquisite, but also create a calm and tranquil atmosphere wherever they're placed. Based. To understand more deeper, let us proceed to the famous examples of these forms of art, which will be discussed by this chart. Thank you, Franklin. Again, hello everyone. I am Charlene Matisilio Abalde and I'm going to report our last topic, which is the 12 most beautiful Buddhist artworks. First, Daibutsu at Dutaiji. It's located in Buddhist temple Dutaiji in Nara, Japan. This sculpture is the world's largest bronze statue of the Buddha. It's height reaching nearly 15 meters. The Buddha said is adorned with 916 individual six girls, recently relics including jewelry and human teeth were found inside the statue and have been attributed to Imperial Shumu. Second, Grand Buddha at Legshan. This enormous representation of Buddha in China's Yangtze province is made of bronze and weighs over 700 tons. This sculpture is one of the youngest on this list, at least was completed in 1996. Third, Lishan Giant Buddha. It's located in Sichuan province in China. The Lishan Giant Buddha is stated figured carved into a red rock cliff face. It was constructed at the juncture of three rivers in hopes that the depiction of Buddha would take the dangerous current downstream. Fourth, Muniwa Buddha, the largest statue of reclining Buddha in the world. The Muniwa Buddha can be found in Muniwa, Myanmar. Fifth, Putamuntum Buddha. It's located in Nakhompatam district of Thailand. The Putamuntum Buddha was made by Kuradu Ferozi. And sixth, Tiantan Buddha statue. Tiantan Buddha statue was constructed in 1993 and it is located in Hong Kong. It is surrounded by smaller statue with offerings to the Buddhas that represent generosity, morality, patience, zeal, meditation, and wisdom.